Hey, David Can here with another question in topic 11.3 capacitance. We have a, a capacitor set up with a, a dielectric in between. So this is some material other than air. Or I suppose it could be air. Uh, but it's not in this case. In this case, it's, it's mica. The capacitor is one millimeter thick. So that's the distance between the plates. And 10 millimeters on each side. So uh, what's implied here is that it's a square. 10 millimeters on each side. Uh, we want to know what the capacitance of the capacitor is going to be if the dielectric between the plates, oops, if the dielectric between the plates is mica. Uh, so different dielectrics between the plates are going to allow us to store different amounts of charge uh, on the plates. Uh, if we take a look at this list, we see that different materials have different dielectrics. Air's dielectric is about 1, uh, but for mica, it's 5.4. So the capacitance of the capacitor depends on a few different things. One is the dielectric strength. Uh, so we're going to be able to store more charge on a capacitor with a mica dielectric than with an air dielectric. The other thing is the surface area. The more surface area there is, uh, the more charge you can spread out over that area, so a bigger capacitance. Uh, we can think of the word capacitance as being similar to capacity. How much charge can you store on this capacitor? Uh, and then we'll divide that by the uh, thickness. Okay, we actually know all of the elements that we need now. We need the uh, dielectric, which for mica is 5.4. Uh, and the area of the plate is uh, 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. So that's going to be... Uh, the area of a square, 10 millimeters squared. And then finally, the separation between the plates, uh, 1 millimeter. OK. You work that out, and uh, you should get 5.4 times 10 to the negative 1. Uh, and the units for capacitance are farads, F, capital F. Uh, so we know the properties of this capacitor that we're talking about now. Um, the next thing we want to know, though, is the maximum voltage that the capacitor can be charged to before the mica dielectric breaks down. Basically, the idea here is that if you put too much charge on the plates, then uh, the electric field becomes so strong that we can push charges through the dielectric, break it down, uh, and we get a, a shock or a, a current through the capacitor. Uh, so there's so based on the dielectric and based on the properties of the of the of the capacitor itself, there's going to be a limit to how much voltage we can put across this capacitor before it breaks down. Uh, the key here is in understanding the dielectric strength for mica. According to this source, it's 118 megavolts per meter. Uh, now, we are going to be setting up the voltage across one millimeter. So if we take, uh, if we take 118 megavolts per meter, or uh, 118 times 10 to the uh, sixth volts per meter, and we multiply this out, by the thickness that we're going to be apl applying it across, or one millimeter, then what we get is uh, 118 times 10 to the third volts, or uh, 118 kilovolts. And, uh, next up, we're going to take three of these capacitors, so the capacitor we just talked about, we're going to take two more, and we're going to join them in a configuration so that we can store charge at 300 kilovolts. We want to know how much charge can be stored. Well, the first thing we need to recognize is that we're trying to store charge at uh, a higher voltage than the breakdown voltage for the single capacitor. So we're going to have to join these three capacitors in such a way that uh, none of them are exposed to a voltage higher than 118 kilovolts. Let's take a look at what that might look like. Okay, so, so the question doesn't actually mention what configuration that is, but there's only going to be one configuration 
for which uh, none of the capacitors are going to be exposed to uh, an over voltage. And that's when the three capacitors are joined in series. So if we put a, a series combination of the three capacitors, connect them up to our 300 kilovolt source, uh, then if, if we think about this in terms of uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can see that uh, if we go around the circuit, the 300 kilovolts that's being supplied by the source has to be distributed into all three capacitors. And since the three capacitors are identical, they're going to take equal voltages of 100 kilovolts each, which means that uh, none of the three capacitors are going to be uh, exposed to a, a voltage higher than what they're able to handle. Th the next thing is that because all three capacitors have the same capacitance and all three capacitors are exposed to the same voltage, all three capacitors are going to be charged to the same uh, total charge. Uh, and that charge is going to be their capacitance times the voltage to which they're charged. Uh, we know their capacitance. That was uh, 5.4 times 10 to the negative 1 farads. And we know the voltage that we're charging them to, 100 kilovolts. So we multiply those together and we get uh, 54, or 5.4 times 10 to the fourth farads. Oh, sorry, not farads, coulombs. There's a lot of coulombs. I, I probably wouldn't poke this with a stick. Uh, but that's just for one of the three capacitors, which means that the total charge in this system is going to be three times that charge, or three times 5.4 times 10 to the fourth. Uh, that's going to be 1.62 times 10 to the fifth coulombs. Uh, 